Okay, fourth graders, guess what? It's lesson 120. It is your last math lesson of the year. It is your last math lesson in your book. You have an investigation after this that you don't actually have to do. So this is your last thing. All right, adding and subtracting mixed numbers with different denominators. We've taken regular fractions with different denominators. We've renamed them, and then we've added and subtracted. Now it's time to take mixed numbers and do that. Okay, so in order... To add or subtract mixed numbers, we have to make sure that the fractions have common denominators. So, let's get started. First things first, we're gonna take example number one, dive right in and we'll go through it. I've listed a couple of the steps here and key things to remember. Remember, you have to have common denominators or you can have the LCD again, okay, the least common denominator. To find and rename common denominators, that's what you need to do first, then you need to reduce, and then you need to add or subtract your whole numbers. So let's dive in. Example number one, it says we are gonna take four and one sixth, and we're going to add two and one half. I'm gonna do it vertically instead of horizontal. We're gonna take and add two and one half. Okay. Let's get started. The denominators of this fraction are not the same. Notice that we have one sixth and we have one half. So we have to rename one half. So it has a denominator of six, okay? So we're gonna keep six the same. It's the least common denominator between two and six. Remember, if you count by twos, two, four, six. And then six doesn't even need to change. So all we need to do is, is change this fraction right here, not the mixed number, but just this fraction into a denominator or a common denominator of six. So I know that two times three over three is gonna give me three, six. What's so half of six is three and multiplied across. So now my fraction actually is two and three, six. So I'm actually gonna just take four and one, six and two and three, six and add them up, okay? One plus three, don't forget I'm adding. One plus three is four, six. Add my whole numbers, four, five, six. Six and four, six. But I'm not done because four, six is not the smallest that it can go. I can divide both the top and the bottom number to reduce this fraction. Two goes into both two and six. Two goes into four, two times. Two goes into six, three times. My final answer is six and two thirds. Okay, so that's where your reducing comes down to. Now, I know that I put these reduce first and then add or subtract your whole numbers. I kind of did the other way and then added my whole numbers first and then I reduced my fraction, but my whole number didn't change. So I could have totally did my reducing first and then add my numbers. These two, I guess, don't really matter unless you were to get an improper fraction. But in this case, you shouldn't have to. You should just have to reduce and then add your two whole numbers to get your final answer, okay? All right, let's go ahead and try the last example. Then you're on your own for the rest of the year. But if you need help, I'm here, okay? So example number two, it says a bicycle trail in the state park is five and three-fourths miles long. The trail is flat for three and a half miles. How many miles of the trail were not flat? You're gonna draw a number line and use the numbers to show the subtraction, okay? Um, I am going to not do the number line just because in reality you don't need to have the number line. I'm going to cut that part out. So we're just going to do the actual math. So first we need to write the problem so that they have common denominators. That's the first thing that you need to do. The numbers we're dealing with are going to be, I'm going to write this so we can all see it. I'm going to write it where we have five and three fourths and we are subtracting three and one half. Okay, so we need to make sure that we have common denominators here. So I see that two times four could get me to eight, but eight is not the smallest or the least common denominator. I know that if I were to list my, multi my factors of two and four, here's listing my factors of two, two, four, six. I'm gonna list my factors of four. Four, eight. Right there, I have four and I have four. So four is going to be my least common denominator. 
So my three fourths is going to stay the same because it already has a denominator of four. I'm going to just going to change my one half fraction to have a denominator of four. And in order to do that, remember we multiply our fraction by something that's um, name is one. So we're going to multiply by two over two because two times two gets me to four. One times two is two. So now this whole fraction changed into three and two fourths. And we're going to subtract five and three fourths. Sorry, it's a little crooked. Okay, you can also do this horizontal. You could take five and three fourths and subtract three and two fourths. Okay, three minus two is one. Denominator stays the same. Five minus three, five, four, three, two. You get two and one fourth. Same way this way, three minus two is one. Four stays the same. Five minus three is two. Okay, so then two and one fourth minus. Either way works, whatever works for you. Sometimes this is easier for me, sometimes this is easier for me. Whatever you feel like, as long as you are showing me your work, you're renaming your fractions first, you're subtracting and you're adding, and then if you have to reduce, make sure you please reduce into the simplest form possible. Okay, all right, that is the last of your math lessons. So go ahead and get your lesson practice done. Um, I know for a fact right now that the last page did not get copied. It only says you have A and B but you probably on the back page don't have a back page. So go ahead and finish writing in C, D, E, F, G, and H. Get those done, post a picture of it on Seesaw, and that will be your math, last math lesson of the year. Good luck, fourth graders.